All right, let's go ahead and practice a little bit more with our string split method. I'll begin by re-executing our code to get our data frame back in its original shape. And as a review, in the last lesson, we extracted the uh, last name from every person in our name column. To do that, we extracted the series. We then called our split method with our str prefix. We used a comma as our delimiter. That gave us a list. From every list, we took the very first element with the str get method. We provided it our index position, which is zero in every list. And we got our last names. And that was pretty fun. We then did value counts. And we got the occurrences, the most common occurrences. Let's say we want the top three. And we got the most common um, last names. Well, here's a new challenge for this lesson. What if we wanted to get the most common first name? As we can see, the first name actually occurs after the comma, and there are a little bit more uh, caveats here, a little bit more trickiness, and that's because some of these names have an initial at the end, and some of these do not. So let's go through the process of extracting the last names from our name series. We'll begin by extracting it with our bracket syntax, and there we have our column. And we're going to want to begin again with our regular string split method and give it the comma as the delimiter. So dot str dot split, open our parentheses and give it an argument of a comma in double quotes. That's going to give us a Python list for every row. And this time, instead of pulling the very first item in the list, we want the second item. So we're going to call str.get, but this time we want the item in the second position, which has an index position of 1. So that's going to get us the string that's being stored in the second place of every single list. Now, the logical step here, at least when you're looking at this uh, column as we have it, would be to call the split method one more time and um, pass it a delimiter of a space because whenever we have a first name with a middle initial, we have a space separating them and thus we can go ahead and separate those two. But we're gonna run into a little bit of an issue. Let's say I do dot str dot split and I provide it with our space. What's going to happen is we're going to get a bizarre looking combination of lists. And you can see we have these uh, commas here which represent list elements, but seemingly nothing within them. And the reason for this is because whenever we take a look at either one of these rows, in between the comma, which was our first delimiter, and the occurrence of our first name, we actually have spaces, or a space. And thus, whenever we're calling the split method and we're providing it with the uh, space character, every time it's running into that space before each name, it's starting to split at that point, and we're getting all these funky um, you know, lists. So what we can do here is before we call our second split method, when we have our regular a series like this, we can call our strip method. And what that's going to do is remove those leading white spaces. And it's especially great because this is, this is a great example of how those white spaces may not always be visible. Before we used our second split method, we couldn't even tell that they existed here. It had to take, a, in many ways, a mistake for us to figure out uh, that little detail about our data set. But now that we call strip, when we execute this, we're not gonna see any immediate visual difference but when we go ahead and proceed with our second split and provide it a space, now we're gonna get something a little bit more pleasing. We're going to get our uh, lists. And as we can see now, wherever we have the middle initials, they're going to occupy the second position in our list. And wherever we don't, such as this name Karina, we're just going to have a one item list. Now, we want to extract the first name, which is always going to be the very first item in this uh, new list or this new series of lists that we've generated. So once again, we want to call .str.get, which you can use whenever you have lists. And this time, we want to extract the first item from each of these lists, which represents our first name. And so the first item in a list will have an index position of zero. Pretty incredible when you think about the fact that we've just chained two, three, four, five different methods together. But finally we'll get it, and there we've extracted uh, with just one line of code, even though we cheated a bit because we strung together a ton of methods, with one line of code we've extracted the first names from our 
uh, name column. Let's find out what the five most popular first names are in Chicago. I'll call the value counts method and then call the head method on top of this new series. And we can see Michael, John, James, Robert, and Joseph are the five most popular first names among the Chicago employees. So now that we've even added that value counts method and the head method, I think we have something like seven chained methods. So there really is no limit here besides your imagination. There's also probably the cell and the box limit and at a, after a certain point, it just starts getting really confusing. But you can see that all that we're doing here is just continuing to call new methods on whatever object that we're getting back. So that's how quickly we can use things like the split, the get, the strip, all of these string methods in combination to get or extract those specific components from the string values in our series. And in the next lesson, we'll continue to explore splits and introduce a couple new ways that we can uh, present the data that the split method returns back to us.